Oh, uh, hello. Just, uh, just reading out here on the uh, on the deck. So as you know, last time we were trying to make this uh, bipolar receiver work, and uh, I have to admit it was a complete failure. Uh, it didn't live up to uh, all of the construction that I put into it, uh, and uh, I couldn't let that sit. So I had to do some more work on this receiver, and we're going to go through that. In this video, got some other surprises. Uh, since we last got together, I've collected a bunch of germanium transistors, and one thing I'd like to do is evaluate the transistors and see exactly what what they're all about. I picked up a couple of testers, and I've restored these. These transistor testers are are uh, some of the early tools that were used in radio shops to see if these newfangled germanium transistors were good or bad. Looks like I lost a uh, alligator clip. <laughs> Got a little repair to do on one of those testers. And here's some homemade testers. So we're going to go through some really interesting homemade uh, transistor testers. Okay. Might have gone a little overboard here, but uh... I was having a problem getting a hold of some germanium transistors, so I found a transistor radio and I removed some of the some of the transistors from that. And I won a couple bids on eBay and picked up a bunch of these transistors. I've sorted some over here that seem to be candidates according to the manual for RF service. I just was not satisfied with the uh, the performance on the receiver. And I didn't want to leave it alone, so I've done some work on the schematic. I think you're going to like the performance compared to what we had before. And uh, I've learned a lot about uh, which transistors work and which do not work in a regenerative circuit using the older style circuitry. In this video we're also going to look at some some ways to test transistors so you don't have to be groping in the dark like I am uh, with this project that we can actually select the transistor before we actually commit it to the design. Here is the same uh, receiver that we uh, worked on in the last video. It's a uh, three transistor bipolar receiver. A regenerative stage with two stages of audio amplification. I just was not pleased with the, uh, the performance of the bipolar and I've been working uh, a little bit uh, over the past couple months to uh, try to improve the performance to investigate some other circuit topologies. I actually uh, tried one circuit that uh, came from an old Raytheon uh, note and they put the, uh, the feedback or the tickler coil in the base and actually tuned the collector circuit which was interesting. It was a good detector and uh, the feedback worked, but uh, very tricky to uh, to adjust. So I abandoned that and uh, went to the more conventional tuned base with the feedback in the collector, like we we normally see with these early regents. So I returned to the uh, to the original style. Uh, one thing I found out was that the biasing of the transistors is extremely critical. If you're using germanium transistors, you need to have uh, you know, a very accurate 0.2 to 0.3 volts, 200 to 300 millivolts, to turn the transistor on into the active region, uh, where it will work as a regen at all. I didn't realize it was that critical, but it really is. So I've got a, an additional control here that we did not have before. This control adjusts the bias of the detector. Around here for germaniums and up here for silicons. It's, uh, it's really allowing more of the transistors to work in the circuit than a fixed bias system, which was very picky about transistors. I can use almost any RF transistor with an FT uh, greater than about 20 or 30 megahertz in this circuit and it will oscillate. Uh, the, the other big change that you'll see from, from last time, and a lot of you are going to love this, 
it's a throttle throttle capacitor or a uh, regeneration control using a variable capacitor. Many of you uh, know that this is a very effective way to control regeneration and are probably happy to see me trying to use this method. I have been uh, using potentiometer methods up to now to do regeneration control. Let's see how this baby uh, operates with various uh, RF transistors. I've got a collection of transistors to try in the set. These are all germaniums that I've collected that have uh, fairly high FTs. Here's that original uh, mixer transistor that we used in the Auto Sprague. Here's a Sprague. It's a 2048. This is fairly common uh, to get on the internet. They, they produce these. It's a fairly late model germanium. Works very well in the receiver. And there's a bunch of other ones that we'll discuss. So, I'm not above uh, stealing parts out of uh, an old transistor radio. I was desperate to get a hold of uh, regen uh, parts, uh, germanium transistors. And these old transistor radios, are, this is a, a realistic from probably, certainly uh, the 70s, I think, realistic brand was out by that time. This is never going to be a collector's item, that's for sure. So... Uh, I started removing some parts and got some good transistors out of the set and looks like I've also taken a driver transformer out and here's an output transformer. So you can get some really good parts from these old transistor radios. The transformers alone are worth, uh, worth recovering uh, from the transistor radio. And the front end mixer, the Autodyne mixer in these AM radios is a good candidate for regenerative stage. I've got the set on and uh, I've adjusted the, the bias. So let's... Uh, so as you can see the throttle control will put us into Autodyne. The fathers of the Eastern religion call the mother of God the Old Holy One Nurse. Any only needed to be seen, not spoken to. On the evening of November the 21st, he was given a drug and was subsequently found to have high levels of alcohol in his blood after being admitted to Christchurch Hospital's emergency department. The coroner, Sue Johnson, found there was no... Judge Ibrahim Raisi. The re-election is likely to safeguard the nuclear agreement. Okay, let's see if we can get some CW. We'll put it in autodyne. It's a little touchy on the control because I've got it uh, quite a few plates on the uh, on the throttle control and it really goes into regen pretty fast now let's play with the bias a little bit better uh, control with a little more bias. It's not as abrupt. So we're getting Cuba and we're getting South America coming in this time of day. It's first thing in the morning on a Saturday. Australia is coming in. Yeah, nice to hear both sides of the conversation coming in on CW. It's a very, very sensitive uh, receiver. So next, let's try a silicon transistor in place of the germanium. Okay, we're using a Sprague 2N2048 and we're going to substitute something else here. What do we got? 
two N forty two oh nine. That's a silicon mixer transistor. We'll try that little guy. Okay. Now one thing you have to be careful of, um, silicon transistors, especially modern ones like that one, have less capacitance than some of the older germaniums. So you'll find that the whole band calibration is off now, and you would have to readjust your, your coil to recalibrate the dial. Let's see where we ended up. Say, we're hearing nothing now. It will not go into regeneration. We have to readjust the bias. We have no choice. So let's do that. Did you hear that? We're over here now. We should be around 0.6 volts. As a matter of fact, let's put the meter on it. Okay, we have our 5.6 volts on one side. 0.76 volts. Okay? That's what the silicon wanted in order to get it into the linear zone. Okay, first thing we notice right off the bat, the silicon's got more sensitivity. This particular transistor, pretty hot. It's higher in frequency, so we want to bring it down a little bit. The further you advance the bias, generally it calms down a little bit. It's a little easier to control. So in order to use the silicon transistor, we had to increase the bias, and we had to readjust the, the coil to bring the CW band back around the beginning of the, of the vernier. But you'll agree, we have a much more controlled receiver now working more like you would expect a receiver to work in the 40 meter band. Also, as the stations are stronger, if you advance the regeneration control, usually you can handle the stations that are a little stronger. We also have a link in the back that we can move out of the way to reduce uh, input. It does overload a little easier than, than a FET, and uh, you do need to, during uh, nighttime hours when stations are stronger, you need to, to lift the link off a little bit. Okay, so let's try another germanium transistor. We turn it off, remove the, the detector transistor, put him back there, uh, grab another one. Here's one. This is one that I purchased on the internet. It's a 2N1726 ETCO. It's supposed to be a high frequency germanium uh, IF mixer RF uh, type transistor. Now we have too much bias now, so we have to back off. So easy see how easy that was to get that transistor working in the circuit by playing with this bias control. Now as I reduce the bias, it becomes more sensitive. So we should probably talk a little bit about um, the different transistors and uh, what you can substitute in. In the output stage, I've got a silicon plugged in, 
uh, the output biasing seems to be flexible enough that it can accept most silicon and germanium uh, audio type transistors. But the preamp stage, which I've got a 2N107 plugged into. You ever heard of a 2N107? That's one of the very first uh, transistors that was sold uh, just for uh, ham use and experimenter use. Um, that one, if you put a silicon transistor in it, the silicon transistor will drive you pretty much into the rail. So you can't have a universal type biasing system on the preamp. You have to adjust one of the resistors. Matter of fact, it's this 470K resistor here. So um, I wanted to try to bias it so that it could accept any transistors in the in the output. It's probably possible to come up with something that would be very flexible and allow you to use almost any device in the audio chain. But right now it seems to be optimized for germaniums. Okay, let's go through the circuit very uh, quickly. Um, the detector itself is a conventional Armstrong feedback type circuit. We have the, uh, the tickler coil in the collector of the transistor, as you'd expect. But notice there's no DC going through the feedback coil. We're using the throttle cap on the end of it, which is the way of varying the, the feedback. So the audio, actually, the detected audio and the bias come through this choke. And the choke goes to a coupling uh, transformer and off to the audio stages. So the direction of the current is up through the emitter, up through the collector, down this way, through this, and back to the battery. So on the, uh, on the base side we have a a conventional tuned circuit, but we're tapping down the tuned circuit approximately one-third up. This is a high C, low L circuit for stability. It's about nine turns of, uh, of number uh, 24 wire, or uh, a little heavier if you if you got number 22, use that. Heavier the better. And uh, we've tapped up uh, three of those nine turns, and I'm going to, right to the base uh, through a 22, uh, 22 ohm resistor, which is basically a parasitic suppressor. You could probably use a, a couple of beads there as well, but the 22 ohms keeps these very high gain transistors from going into some high frequency oscillation. Uh, super regeneration is very common with these high frequency transistors. And we don't want super regeneration, we want straight regeneration with this detector. Here is the, uh, the novel uh, bias setup. We're biasing not through a choke or a resistor to the base or coming off the collector to base with a resistor, which would be conventional. Instead, we're controlling the bias and bringing it up through the coil into the base. So we have to bypass the bottom of the, of the coil. The coil is essentially at DC. This uh, I found to be far superior than trying to uh, parallel in DC through a choke or some other means. And it's very simple. I could have used a voltage divider pot here, but instead I established a good uh, DC and AC ground uh, with this network, and I'm controlling the bias with a 10K pot. You can put some resistors each side of the pot to give you a sweet spot effect. For instance, you might have a 2K on this side and a 1K on that side in order to give you more fine grain uh, adjustability. Uh, you want to have a nice steady uh, bias system for the germanium transistors. Uh, everything else is pretty conventional. This is just a voltage amplifier. The output stage uses the uh, primary of one of those green uh, output transformers from a transistor radio. The Radio Shack green uh, transformer works just fine in that in that role. Nothing too crazy here, but different enough that it's making uh, an unusable circuit usable. So, talking about the coil, you will find that with slug tune coils, and this is a slug tune that we're using. I'm not showing it with a uh, 
with a slug tune arrow here, but there is a slug in there. That as you adjust the slug, you will get varying amounts of feedback. That's something most people don't think about. When you think about adjusting feedback, uh, you know that the, the throttle pot controls that. You know that the number of turns on the tickler controls that. You know that the spacing between the coil controls that. But also, the position of the slug has a great effect. So you'll find you have to set the thing up differently uh, based on is it an air weld coil or a slug tune coil, not just in terms of frequency coverage, but in terms of feedback. So next we want to see how we can grade these transistors, how we can test these transistors so that we're not groping in the dark and hoping that the circuit will work. How do I know that the transistor that I've selected for the detector will actually work in the regenerative circuit? And how do we know if the audio transistors are good, if they're leaky, if they have enough gain? Modern silicon devices, you don't have to worry about that. They pretty much meet their specifications perfectly. And they are, uh, through statistical processes on the semiconductor line, are controlled so closely that you can guarantee those transistors will work. Not so with germaniums. With germaniums, you had a wide variation. You had out-of-control processes. And these are old devices. They, uh, they've taken a lot of ESD damage. They've taken a lot of uh, thermal damage and so on over the years. They've been taken in and out of circuits. We need to test these transistors and see if they work. So what we have here is the first generation of transistor testers. Uh, the radio shops were beginning to see um, transistors in some of the two-way radio equipment and also in the uh, entertainment radios. A lot of uh, the uh, portable radios actually had sockets in them. And I'm not talking about the, the, the small uh, pocket type radios. I'm talking about the radios that were uh, portable size which uh, took D cells and you could take them to the beach and it's kind of like uh, boom boxes today. Uh, now this particular tester has a socket and it also has some loose leads for hooking on to larger transistors like TO3s. So uh, this simple tester, if you look at the schematic, you'll see that it basically is just an audio oscillator, a very strange circuit, hard to understand. I had no manual. I had nothing to go on, but uh, when I took it apart, it was uh, one of those battery holders with acid all over the place, and it was a complete mess. But I was able to trace the circuit enough to tell what it is. So as you can see, it's got a PNP or an NPN switch. And it's got this funny dial. So let's stick a transistor in this in this thing. I'm just going to grab a random one. How about this one? We'll put the transistor in the socket. Okay. And when you put the transistor in the socket, it makes a connection. So it So this is a PNP transistor. And it tells me that that PNP transistor is good. That's as simple as we got. Um, but if I have an NPN, these are NPNs in this bag. Stick an NPN in there. See what happens. And what happens is it doesn't work. Must be a must be a bad transistor. Let's try another one. See, it's already doing its job. Get in there. Okay. So that is definitely an NPN transistor. This is definitely a bad transistor. Okay, one step up from that simple Motorola tester is the Lafayette Transistor Analyzer. Uh, by the way, I picked up both of these at a ham fest. They were a dollar each. I might have overpaid. So let's see if we can measure something here. I'm going to grab a transistor. Emitter is on this side. Emitter base collector. Okay. And we're looking for to turn it on. Okay, it looks like it's a PNP. And 
we are measuring gain. Looks like you you basically take the number on the on the meter, you multiply it by this figure it says times 50. So that's like point 5 times 50, so that'd be a gain of 25. It's a little more than that. So it's like a gain of 40. It also has a leakage. So you can measure the leakage of the transistor. How do they do the leakage? They basically open up the base and just look for leakage from collector to emitter. The second feature on this, besides reading DC gain, and again, now the way you do DC gain on this is you, you take the reading on the meter, multiply it times the multiplier, and if you have leakage, you subtract it directly from that. This, this is not a leaky transistor. Now the in-circuit means uh, there's an onboard oscillator much like that Motorola tester. It's a 5 kilohertz oscillator. If the transistor has enough gain, it will put something out in the in-circuit position, and it does. The gain, or beta, of the transistor. Here is a little tester that, uh, that I built that allows you to measure the gain of the transistor as well as the DC beta of the transistor, the HFE. Um, all I want to show you with this is that you have a low frequency transistor. This is just an unmarked PNP. You have a certain amount of gain and we're at 5 megahertz. Now we have another transistor. I think this was uh, one of the IF transistors in the transistor radio. As you can see, it has more gain because a higher FT. And then here's our um, our transistor we've been using, the 1225. We know this one has pretty good gain. Aha! Look at all the the gain comparison. So here's a simple way of telling if the transistors have high frequency gain compared to other transistors. This is the, uh, the leak test. By the way, this little box can be powered by your power supply, but I like to use an isolated block like this AC adapter. It gives you a nice isolated power supply. It's going to be regulated anyway by the 7809 regulator that we have on board. Now, remember what I told you about leakage. Leakage this is a momentary switch. NPN, PNP. Actually, this flops the power supply over here. This switch is the uh, the base drive in current. Simple transistor leakage testers use a resistor on the base. You push the button. And it puts you know five to twenty microamps of DC current on the base, and then you measure the current on the collector subtract the leakage, and that gives you the DC gain of the transistor. This one's a little more accurate because we're using precision current sources. A precision current source for the NPN, and a precision current sink for the PNP. So when you click the switch towards the NPN, it puts the current source 10 microamps into the base. When you go the other way, it puts the current sink into the PNP, into the base. We'll directly measure the current out of the transistor using the milliammeter or the microammeter on our meter. So we have 33.7 microamps of leakage on this transistor. Okay, And it's varying. You put your hand on a, uh, a germanium and heat it up and you'll see it. Leakage goes up as I, I heat it with my finger. Germanium's uh, uh, very reactive to heat. Thermal runaway can happen. There's our leakage. 229 microamps. We subtract 38 microamps. Divide in 10 microamps and that is the gain of this transistor. Okay. Again, this is an accurate 10 microamp precision current sink. That's producing 224 micro microamps on the output. We subtract the 35 microamps showing as leakage and then divide 10 microamps into it and that will give us the actual gain of this transistor. Let's 
go back to our friend that we measured before. Okay, this guy has more leakage showing. It's got 165 microamps of leakage and 761, 764 microamps. So you subtract from 763, 164, and divide 10 into it, and that is the gain of this transistor. Obviously, this transistor has more gain than the first one we measured. So, some more tidbits about this tester. Um, I used a, a special uh, reference to make the current sync, and I used a uh, an op amp, and the power supply itself um, divided down as my reference for the current source. So um, we're actually more accurate on the PNP than we would be on the NPN because the PNP has an actual voltage reference. So no matter if the voltage drifted from our 7809 uh, down, down a couple volts or up a couple volts, the PNP would always read accurately. The NPN, on the other hand, if the voltage regulator went out of regulation, it would give us some errors. So the current sink is more precise than the current source. But with a the regulator, they're both tremendous and far better than a simple resistor with a push button. If you really like transistors, you can use something called a current mirror. Current mirror is an interesting device uh, developed uh, by Widlar and uh, Brokaw. Uh, Broca and analog devices. Uh, these types of uh, current mirrors are the basis for DC stability in all modern analog circuits. Integrated circuits uh, that are analog especially have to have very very stable over temperature uh, gain characteristics. So to do that they use these current mirror systems. And this uh, novel dual current mirror produces the source and the sink for us uh, just like the reference and the op amp did in the simpler circuit. So are we done yet? No, we have one more box to investigate. This is a crystal oscillator circuit with a diode detector on the output and a small meter. And again we have a momentary switch, NPN, PNP. All this does is flip the battery, the 9 volt battery inside, positive to negative. The oscillator is controlled by a single crystal. So we take a, a typical transistor, let's grab this, this is, this is a 2N2048, so that's an RF transistor. We put the RF transistor in, of course nothing happens, but look at this little box of crystals we've come up with. Okay, so we've got some crystals. 1 megahertz, got the 1 megahertz meter movement, I hope you can see the meter move. That transistor can handle 1 megahertz. So then we go to so 2.015. It's an old marine band crystal. And again, the transistor likes the crystal. Moving up to 3093. Transistor still oscillating. And so on. And we go up here to 6852. Transistor still likes it. Okay, jumping up to 9 megs. Okay, a little bit lower. 10. Ah, much lower. 11.7. Dead. So there we go. This transistor had enough gain for this oscillator up to 10 megahertz. Okay, so this is this is a way to grade transistors very very quickly for regen service. Let's try another one. Okay, here's that one that was kind of an IF type device. Let's see if we can the one I stole out of the transistor radio. So let's go back to our one. Oh, it's sluggish. At one megahertz, it is oscillating, but it's sluggish. Okay, so we can already see that this transistor is probably not going to be ideal for a regen. Okay, two, we are oscillating. 3093. 
oscillating. 3900. Nothing. Okay? So that's an IF transistor. 455 kilohertz. Uh, it was useful up to about 3 megs. Okay? That's how this little tester works. And where do you get all these crystals? They're surplus crystals out of old marine radios, old ham radios. Nobody really wants this style of crystal that are outside the ham band. I just have a few for, oh, I guess right up to 16.9 megahertz. Very simple tester. Very quick way to grade if a transistor is going to make a good device for a regen. This is my vote. I would hope that you are totally bored with the subject of germanium transistors at this point and that we can leave this subject in the uh, 1955 to 1965 era where it belongs. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, let's go on to something new. So this is CHU Canada at 7850.